Hello students, welcome to online theory. Let's see today's daily news analysis. The first news is on Digital Nation, a book which is unveiled by PM Narendra Modi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi unveiled a book titled Digital Nation Solving Technology's People's Problem in New Delhi on 20th October 2019. He presented book's first copy to eminent industrialist and philanthropist Ratan Tata. So who has written this book? So please make note of this because this is important because most of the exams will be asking uh, questions based on books and who is the author of this particular book. So this book has been written by N. Chandrasekharan and Rupa Purushottaman. I am writing this for you. And N. Chandrasekharan is chairman of Tata Sons. This book, which is Digital Nation, presents a powerful vision of the future. It is where uh, future technology and human being coexist in a mutually beneficial ecosystem. It stresses that instead of accepting technology as a replacement of human labor, India can use it as an aid to generate more jobs. The term digital expresses how digital tools can act as a bridge between aspirations and achievements. This book strengthens the vision of the government on a technological approach. This stresses that technology is a bridge and not a divider. Okay, So it, the book stresses that technology is a bridge and it is not a divider and it is a multiplier and which is not a threat okay so technology is not a threat it is a multiplier that is what the book is trying to say okay so please make a note of this digital nation which is written by n chandrasekharan and rupa purushottaman let's move on to the next news in next news we will see sri lanka has removed sri lanka has been removed from gray list of financial action task force okay so recently, Sri Lanka has been removed from the grey list of Financial Action Task Force. The country has taken new measures on the financial security. So what is grey list? Okay, Let's see what is grey list of FATF. Grey list identify, is identified by FATF and it refers to a jurisdiction with strategic anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism deficiencies. Sri Lanka was, the was first included in FATF's blacklist in 2011. Okay, in 2011, it was first included in the blacklist of 2000, uh, FATF and by 2012, it was listed in the uh, list, it was listed in the list of countries as a dangerous country with no commitment to financial security plan. Later in October 2016, the FATF subjected Sri Lanka to a review of FATF's International Cooperation Review Group for assessing the progress of AML, which is anti-money laundering, CFT effectiveness in the country. So the announcement regarding the removal of Sri Lanka's name from the list of countries at risk for money laundering was made by Sri Lankan Minister of Finance, Mangala Samaravira, after a five day FATF plenary concluded in Paris, France. Okay, let's see a few points, key important points about FATF. It is a France, it is a Paris based organization. FATF, it's headquartered in Paris, in France. Okay, it is an intergovernmental organization which is established in 1989. Okay. It is the international terror financing watchdog. So, it is a watchdog for international terror financing. Okay, And it also tries to combat terrorist financing, money laundering as well as other related threats to the integrity of international financial system. So, this is basically FATF is basically a watchdog of international financial system and it tries to establish integrity of international financial system okay so that is the importance of this 
particular organization. Let's move on to the next news. In next news, it says that India will be hosting the 91st Interpol General Assembly in 2022. Interpol, so let's see what is Interpol. Interpol is an international police cooperation organization which is based in Lyon, France. Okay, so what is Interpol? It is an international police cooperation organization based in, please make a note, Lyon, France because uh, many questions are also asked on international organizations where is the headquarters of this particular organization etc. So for in, uh, Interpol, the uh, organization is based in Lyon, France. The organization has how many members? It has 194 member states and it has 100 years of experience of international cooperation in policing. The General Assembly of Interpol is an annual exercise hosted by its member countries. In this assembly, the representatives discuss and deliberate upon all major decisions affecting general policy, working methods, the resources needed for international cooperation and finances. So, in the uh, ongoing 88th Interpol General Assembly in Santiago. Okay, so right now, in the ongoing 88th Interpol General Assembly in Santiago. Okay, so right now, 88th Interpol General Assembly is going on in Santiago. In this, Rishi Kumar Shukla, the director of CBI, represents Interpol in India. Okay, so who is representing India in the present uh, General Assembly meeting? It is Rishi Kumar Shukla, who is the director of Central Bureau of Investigation. The CBI director was accompanied by Delhi Police Commissioner Amulya Patnaik and Madhya Pradesh Police Chief VK Singh at the General Assembly. The 91st Interpol General Assembly. So, in 2022, it would be the 91st General Assembly meet. Okay, which and this meet will be hosted by India. It will be held in India as part of celebrations of 75th anniversary of Indian independence. Okay. On in uh, 2022, it will also be 75th anniversary of Indi Indian independence and India will be hosting the General Assembly of Interpol. That is about this particular news. Let us move on to the next news. The next news is on the Vice President presented the Most Eminent Senior Citizen Award. So, Vice President of India, Sri Venkaya Naidu has presented the Most Eminent Senior Citizen Award to whom? Legal Luminary and former Attorney General K. Parasharan at function held in New Delhi. Okay. So, uh, Parasharan, Mr. Parasharan, he was also a former Attorney General. He was honoured with the award on the occasion of the Elders Day celebration of Age Care in India, an organisation working for the wel welfare of the elderly. So, he was born in 1927. So, this particular news is important for the section Famous Personalities. So, this year, uh, the most eminent senior citizen award goes to K. Parasharan and he was born in 1927. He is an Indian lawyer. As I already mentioned, he was a former Attorney General. He was awarded Padma Bhushan in 2003 and Padma Vibhushan in 2011. He was Advocate General of Tamil Nadu in 1976 and he became Attorney General of India under the Prime Ministership of Rajiv Gandhi and Indira Gandhi. Parasharan is known for his erudition, discipline, Hard work, honesty and ethics. So that is about this news. Let us move on to the next one. Christine Lagarde is appointed as the head of European Central Bank which is ECB. So she will replace the outgoing president. So who is the outgoing president of ECB? She is, the president is Mario Draghi. Okay. And she will be uh, replacing this person from 1st of November 2019. So, on 2nd of July 2019, 
the European Council considered Christine Lagarde to be the appropriate candidate for President of European Central Bank. The Council, that is Economic and Financial Affairs, then issued a formal recommendation on 9th of July 2019. So, she is a 63-year-old French lawyer, politician and economist and has a good leadership and institutional experience. She is the chairwoman of the International Monetary Fund since 2011. Okay. She is the chairwoman of IMF since 2011. So that makes her a that's that makes her the right candidate to head European Central Bank. Okay. So that is about this particular news. Let's see some key points about European Central Bank. It was formed on 1st of June 1998 and is headquartered in Frankfurt, Germany. Where is ECB headquartered? It is headquartered in Frankfurt in Germany and the currency dealt is Euro. The European Central Bank is the central bank for the Euro and administers monetary policy within the Eurozone. It comprises how many member states? It comprises 19 member states of European Union and is one of the largest monetary areas in the world. Okay, So, that is about this particular news. Christine Lagarde will be heading European Central Bank from 1st of November 2019. Let us go on to the next news. Next news is on IMNEX 2019. IMNEX 2019. The opening ceremony of second edition. So, this is the second edition of Indo Myanmar Joint Naval Exercise. Okay. So, it is a it is Indo Myanmar Joint Naval Exercise and it was conducted on board INS Ranvijay. Right, and it was held in Vishakhapatnam. It is it is still going on in Vishakhapatnam from 19 to 22nd of October. So this will be concluding tomorrow. Myanmar naval ships UMS Sinfushin F14 and UMS Tabinshweti 773 both arrived at Vishakhapatnam, and they are engaging in the professional interaction with the Indian Navy personnel for sharing of expertise on different maritime issues between the navies. This year's edition will actually increase the scope and complexity and is a testimony of growing maritime cooperation between the two navies. This joint exercise will encompass different operations such as flying exercises using integral helicopter, seamanship evolution at sea anti-air and surface firing exercises. This exercise would be conducted in two phases. Let us see these two phases. The first phase is harbour phase. This includes frequent visits to the Indian naval units training and maintenance facility at Vishakhapatnam. The second phase is C phase. In this phase, Indian Navy's INS Kutar a missile COVID and INS Ranvijay a guided missile destroyer will be carrying out a joint exercise with the Myanmar ships okay, uh, in the Bay of Bengal. Next phase is C phase. In this phase, Indian Navy's INS Kutar, a missile corvette and INS Ranvijay, a guided missile destroyer will be carrying out a joint exercise with Myanmar ships in the Bay of Bengal. Okay, So, that is about today's daily news analysis. We will be coming back with daily news analysis every day at the same time. 
Please stay tuned to Online Tayari's um, YouTube channel for daily current affairs updates. Till tomorrow, signing off, Anjali.